So today we're going to talk about where cancer comes from. Where does cancer cells originate from? Would you believe that cancer cells originate from normal cells? I mean, that's pretty weird. Why would cancer cells come from normal cells? So let's talk about that. So really what happens that causes a normal cell to turn into a cancer cell is damage within a normal cell. It's damage within the mitochondria. Now there are certain um, older or ancient genes that are built into our system, into our cells, that our bodies and other organisms have been using for a very long time time. And apparently, under certain conditions, when the mitochondria becomes damaged, there is an adaptation to a plan B of helping that cell survive. And so the difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell is a cancer cell does not run on the normal metabolism that a normal cell uses. A cancer cell runs on this older, kind of prehistoric type metabolism where your cells are fermenting its fuel, okay? That's what a cancer cell does. And what's really fascinating about when a normal cell turns into a cancer cell because of this damage in the mitochondria, the cancer cell now becomes immortal. It no longer has a point where it stops dividing. It keeps dividing on and on and on, and it lives forever. Versus a normal cell, which divides a certain amount of times, and then it stops. It dies. So a cancer cell becomes immortal. That's what's unique about a cancer cell. The other thing that's interesting about a cancer cell is they divide much faster than a normal cell. So they're just growing really, really fast. The other thing that's unique is that they're hogging a lot of the fuel. So they're just basically eating like crazy. They're eating glucose. They're eating certain uh, amino acids like glutamine, uh, much more than normal cells. And uh, in my last video, I also talked about they can also uh, consume ketones uh, for some of the cellular membranes that they need to survive. Now, the other thing that's interesting about a cancer cell is it migrates into areas of inflammation, okay? Now, this is good data because anything that can decrease inflammation in your body will help you slow down the migration of these cancer cells. Now, the other thing about a cancer cell is that it requires angiogenesis. Now, what is that? That's a condition where this tumor or cancer is fed new blood vessels, okay? So it can get nutrients and oxygen. Well, certain chemotherapy uh, addresses this angiogenesis. It starves off these blood vessels, so then it starves off the cancer, and it's called anti-angiogenesis. So this brings up the point, are there natural things that are anti-angiogenic? And the answer is, yes, there are. And that would be things like wormwood extract, curcumin, resveratrol, green tea, and cruciferous vegetables. So there are certain things like cruciferous vegetables that cause the cancer cells to commit suicide and not your normal cells. That's called selective apoptosis. Okay, so this is why you should be consuming cruciferous vegetables on a regular basis. Now, there's a couple other things about cancer cells that you need to know about. They need growth factors to grow, okay? If they don't have growth factors, then they can't grow. And the, one of the biggest growth factors is insulin. And it's well known that insulin triggers the growth of cancer. Now, why is that important? Because you want to do things to keep insulin on the low side, and that would be going on a low-carb diet. That would be correcting insulin resistance. So anything that can help lower insulin and correct insulin resistance would naturally help prevent cancer and even help make cancer less of a problem. And this is why even the drug metformin, which addresses insulin resistance and lowers insulin and reduces the production of glucose, is anti-cancer. Now, I'm not recommending taking metformin, but I'm just telling you, anything that reduces insulin, insulin resistance, making insulin more sensitive, reducing glucose would be a very good strategy. Now, in the case of a type 1 diabetic, where they're taking insulin as a treatment, that's called exogenous insulin, the strategy for them would be to decrease the amount of insulin that they require. And to do that, you would want to go on a low-carb diet. Because even though they're going to require insulin, the lower the carb, the less 
quantity of insulin that they would need. Now, the other growth factor is IGF number one, insulin growth factor number one. Now, this is a potent growth factor. So a strategy to lower this to some levels would be a good thing. Now, how can you do that? You guessed it, fasting. Now, in certain experiments, within 24 hours of fasting, there's a decrease of 43% of IGF number one. Okay. When you fast 48 hours, you get a decrease of this hormone by 76%. And if you fast 72 hours, you can decrease this uh, growth factor by 82%. And this is another reason why fasting is so important to not just prevent cancer, but if you have cancer, to help shrink cancer. Fasting also stimulates something called mitophagy. That is the recycling and the removal of damaged mitochondria from the system and recycling those into new cells. And as I said before, cancer originates from damage to the mitochondria. Fasting directly helps you reduce the amount of damaged mitochondria. So that would be an important thing to know about. And the last point I want to mention about fasting is that fasting increases the antioxidant network that protect the mitochondria from getting damaged in the first place. So that's another reason why you should do fasting on a regular basis. Now, out of all the things that damage the mitochondria, what are the most important things to know about that? It's the chronic exposure to chemicals, chronic exposure to stress, inflammation, UV, like in too much sun, too much radiation. I mean, I remember um, before I was a chiropractor, I was an x-ray tech, and I would go to nursing homes with my portable x-ray machine and take x-rays in the nursing home would I ever wear a shield? No. Big mistake. So I did that for quite a few years. And I would take these x-rays, bring it to the hospital, get the reading, and then um, do this thing all day long. And this is just another point about the chronic exposure to radiation. You may think that it's not going to affect me, but if you are an x-ray tech, <laughs> it can definitely affect you if you're not wearing a shield. And so I need to work extra hard at getting my body to be so healthy to offset that radiation that I had for those years that I was exposed to radiation. And then what about the chronic exposure to glucose as in a diabetic or, or a person that has insulin resistance because they've ate so many carbs? An average American consumes like a, a cup and a half of sugar. If you take, calculate all the carbohydrates that eventually turn into sugar, a cup and a half every single day. Is that a chronic exposure to glucose? It sure is. And this is why we have such a problem with cancer. So there are certain lifestyle things that you can do to offset this. That's called epigenetics. I've done videos on that. I'll put a link down below. And then we have our own immune system that needs to be strong. There's two specific immune cells that directly kill cancer. That would be the natural killer cells, and that would be the cytotoxic T cells. And both of those can be improved and strengthened if you know how to do it. And even give away a free course on how to bulletproof your immune system. If you want more information about that, I put a link down below. All right. Thanks for watching.